Hi friends, welcome back to Curious Vet. I am Dr. Mosina. In today's video, we will see an important topic that is portosystemic shunt in small animals. A portosystemic shunt is an abnormal connection between the portal vascular system and systemic circulation. In this picture, there you can see a normal circulation where the blood from the intestine yeah, pass through the liver get filtered and filtered blood, blood is passed into the systemic circulation. But in extrahepatic and intrahepatic shunts, extrahepatic shunt occurs outside the liver and intrahepatic inside. In both cases, unfiltered toxic blood is directly uh, transferred to the systemic circulation. So, blood from the abdominal organs which should be drained by the portal vein into the liver is instead shunted to the systemic circulation by the PSS. This means that a portion of the toxins, proteins and nutrients absorbed by the intestine bypass the liver and are shunted directly into the systemic circulation. In this picture you can see an extra hepatic shunt. So there are two categories of congenital shunts. One is extrahepatic outside the liver and second is intrahepatic inside the liver. In the picture A represents a normal circulation. The picture B represents an intrahepatic shunt and C you can see the extrahepatic shunt. While most portosystemic shunts are congenital, under, under circum, uh, certain circumstances, portosystemic shunts may be acquired secondary to another problem with the liver that is called acquired shunts. So again this picture represents a normal circulation that is normal blood flow through the hepatic portal vein and get filtered and passed to the uh, passed through the caudal vena cava leading to heart and extrahepatic and intrahepatic shunts. And in a normal pet, the blood that exits the intestine, spleen and pancreas enters the portal vein which then takes the blood into the liver. The liver metabolizes and detoxifies this blood. If a shunt is present, the liver is deprived of factors that enhance liver development. These factors are called hepatotrophic factors. And the, uh, the deprivation or the loss of these factors result in the failure of liver to reach normal size leading to hepatic atrophy. A common result of hepatic atrophy is hepatic insufficiency which then combined with the circulating toxins, proteins and nutrients frequently result in hepatic encephalopathy. Hepatic encephalopathy is a clinical syndrome of altered central nervous system function due to the failure of normal liver function. The genetic basis of PSS in dogs is unknown but it is considered congenital and breeds affected include miniature schnauzer, uh, Yorkshire Terrier, Irish Wolfhounds, Maltese, Australian Cattle Dog, Golden Retrievers, Old English Sheepdog, Labrador Retrievers etc. So these are the breeds most commonly affected with congenital portosystemic shunt. Single extrahepatic shunts are typically congenital and affect small and toy breeds. Single intrahepatic shunts affect large breeds. But in cats, cats nearly always have extrahepatic shunts and the left gastric is the most common. Acquired PSS are almost always multiple vessels which develop in response to hepatic hypertension. They can occur in any breed or age of animal. They are a compensatory mechanism to prevent or delay liver failure. As such, they cannot be ligated without causing severe symptoms and medical management is the only option for the treatment of such acquired PSS conditions. Coming to the signs and symptoms of PSS, animals with congenital portosystemic shunts may present for small body stature, anesthetic intolerance that is prolonged recovery following an anesthetic event and behavioral abnormalities.
the signs are often episodic and may be more noticeable after eating these neurological signs are due to hepatic encephalopathy syndrome signs of abnormal neurologic function include ataxia seizures blindness and head pressing but apart from that the animal can show some other clinical signs also and the other signs may include anorexia vomiting diarrhea constipation thyroidism polyuria polydipsia stanguria and hematuria Now let's see the diagnostic method for the PSS. One is blood work, then urinalysis, liver function test, radiograph, ultrasound, nuclear scintigraphy that is a non-invasive technique involving colonic administration of radioisotope. then photography photography is an x ray dye study that specifically highlights the portal system and ct scan with intravenous contrast now let's see the liver function test mainly bile acids and ammonia bile acids are measured after an overnight fast and then 2 hours after eating in dogs with pss one or both sets of bile acids are increased bile acids can increase with any liver disease so high bile acids are not specific to congenital photosystemic shunts this picture shows an ultrasound image of left divisional intrahepatic photosystemic shunt in a golden retriever can see the shunt clearly in the ultrasound now next see the picture of photography an x-ray dye study that specifically highlights the portal system the picture on the left is a normal photograph while the photo on the right is an abnormal photograph with the large arrow pointing to the shunt and the smaller arrows pointing to the space that should be filled with blood vessels like the normal one then coming to the treatment first let's see the medical management before surgery can be performed patient may need to be stabilized medically the goal of medical management is to improve patient health to a point where the risk of anesthesia and surgery is low medical management consists of a low protein diet and oral administration of antibiotic and lactulose the goals are to decrease the bacterial population in the intestine and to minimize the production of toxins lactulose is a cathartic which promotes the expulsion of fetal fecal matter as well as decreasing the bacterial load in the colon and antibiotics help to eliminate bacteria that promote the formation of toxins the diet should provide high quality protein if seizures are a part of clinical signs anti seizure medication may also be used keppra that is levetiracetam is an anti seizure uh, drug has been possibly shown to reduce the occurrence of post operative seizures which is a rare but potential devastating complication coming to the surgical management the treatment of choice for a single pss is surgical attenuation that is narrowing or full ligation that is tying off of the abnormal shunt vessel this full ligation may be done instantaneously using suture material or through an intravenous injection of an embolus of a special glue material or delayed full ligation with an amyloid constrictor cellophane band or an intravenous embolic coil
If patient cannot be identified at surgery, an intraoperative potogram is performed and when the shunt is identified, pressure in the portal vein may be measured to determine if complete ligation is possible. Excessively high portal system pressure causes portal hypertension and can result in death. An acute portal hypertension results in abdominal distension, pain, bloody diarrhea, ileus and endotoxic shock. So, in such cases, partial ligation is performed if there is a risk of portal hypertension. Here, the occlusion that that is uh, occlusion pressure is too high in such cases. So, in such cases, we should not do the complete ligation. Partial ligation of the shunt may be done by partially enclosing the vessel with a suture ligature until the pressure rises its, at its acceptable limit. About half of the patients using this method will go on to scar, scar close, close their shunts. But about half will maintain some shedding of blood and need to do a second surgery a month later. This method is rarely used anymore to address single in extrahepatic shunts. Although in intrahepatic shunts, partial ligation or transvenous coils can be used to address the shunting vessel. Due to the availability of amyloid constrictors, intravenous coils and cellophane bands, partial ligation is rarely used in single extrahepatic shunts. So here is the picture of amyloid constrictor. It is made of a casein in a stainless steel C-shaped ring. It is placed around the shunt and the ring is closed with a small key. This, this is a detailed image of amyloid constrictor ring. You can see a keyed slot. Then inside you will see a milk casein inner ring that slowly swells. And outside layer is a metal outer ring. And in, this, in the picture on the right you will see uh, the arrow shows the direction of blood flow through the shunt. Over the next few weeks the casein swells and gradually occlude the shunts. This is considered a method of gradual occlusion. So amyloid constrictor ring can be used for a gradual occlusion method. The vessel may also be occluded using a special cellophane band as you can see in this picture. The band will incite an inflammatory response and the vessel will slowly close down over a period of months. Next method is transvenous coiling usually used for larger intrahepatic shunting vessels. This is a minimally invasive procedure in which coils are placed in the portosystemic shunt to allow the shunt to close down progressively over time. The coils are held in place by the use of a metal or metal alloy stent. The entire procedure is performed through a small puncture in the blood vessel in the neck region. The goal of the procedure is to help the liver be able to perform normal functions more effectively as more blood vessel travels through the liver. So in these pictures you can see an intraoperative photo showing an amyloid ring around, around a portoosseous shunt on the top. And in this picture, uh, stomach, esophagus and the shunt are uh, clearly visible. And a cellophane band being placed around a portocaval shunt in the bottom. The cellophane band is a linear clear structure running from the right to the middle bottom of the image. So this picture shows a lateral radiograph following percutaneous transvenous coil embolization of a left divisional intrahepatic shunt with placement of an endovascular stent in the caudal vena cava and thrombogenic coils at the stent anastomosis. Coming to the aftercare and outcome. 
റൂട്ടീൻ പോസ്റ്റ് ഓപ്പറേറ്റീവ് മാനേജ്മെൻറ്റ് ഇൻക്ലൂഡ്സ് ഇൻട്രാവേനസ് ഫ്ലൂയിഡ്സ് ആൻഡ് പെയിൻ മെഡിക്കേഷൻസ് ലാക്ട് ലോസ് ആൻഡ് ഡയറ്റ് മോഡിഫിക്കേഷൻ ആർ കണ്ടിന്യൂഡ് ആസ് ഇറ്റ് ടേക്സ് ടൈം ഫോർ ദ ലിവർ സെൽസ് ടു റീജനറേറ്റ് ആൻഡ് അഡ്ജസ്റ്റ് ടു ദ ന്യൂ സർക്കുലേഷൻ ദീസ് മെഡിക്കേഷൻസ് മേ ബി ടേപ്പേർഡ് ഡിപ്പെൻഡിംഗ് ഓൺ ഫോളോ അപ്പ് ബൈ ലാസിഡ് ടെസ്റ്റ് റിസൾട്ട്സ് because serum bile acid values may or may not improve some dogs may need long term treatment whereas others may only need some dietary restrictions or no medical restrictions after ligation the liver should regenerate failure of the procedure can occur for any of the following reasons one failure of the shunt to close then recanalization of the shunt that is the shunt reopens third one the presence of a second unrecognized shunt that is extremely unlikely or rare then the last one is the development of multiple acquired portosystemic shunt secondary to portal hypertension or fibrosis now let's see the complications of surgery complications after surgery include portal hypertension that is the important complication which can lead to loss of proper blood circulation to abdominal organs and death animals may show signs of ascites vomiting diarrhea depression and use of gradual occlusion devices have substantially reduced the, the chance of uh, death in such cases one of the most problematic but rare complication is development of seizures that are refractory to treatment this occurs most frequently in toy breed dogs in the first 1 to 2 days of surgery the cause of seizures is unknown seizures may be managed with anti seizure medications In severe cases intravenous administration of anesthesia or anesthetic agents may be required to control seizures development of seizures that are poorly controlled by medication is a very poor prognosis The prognosis is excellent if the animal survives the immediate post operative period and full ligation of the shunt is achieved with partial ligation the prognosis is not as good so in this x ray you will see a post operative picture of the liver shunt here an amyloid ring constrictor is used In many cases full ligation is possible in animals that were partially ligated 4 to 6 months previously follow follow up by lacid test and portal scintigraphy should also be done to monitor for shunt function So that's all about portosystemic shunt in small animals So if if the video is useful and informative please like it and share it with your friends if you are new to this channel and has not subscribed yet please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you get notified every time i upload a video see you soon with another video thank you